President, will you attack North Korea? After a Sunday church service, the president was noncommittal about a military response to the North Korean test, but in a series of morning tweets, he said North Korea's words and actions continue to be very hostile and dangerous to the United States. Last month, the president issued a blunt warning to Pyongyang. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Trump's August warning followed reports North Korea had miniaturized a nuclear warhead, making it small and light enough to fit on top of a missile. Seismic readings from Sunday's test suggest North Korea may have developed a hydrogen bomb. Uh, this step, uh, if it is right that they have now developed a hydrogen bomb, is, is a serious escalation in their ability to commit mass acts of murder. Members of Congress from both political parties said the United States should continue to strengthen missile defense capabilities and use economic sanctions to force a change in North Korea's behavior. Use economic leverage to go against not only North Korea, but every financial institution, every company that does business with North Korea, almost all of them rely on the U.S. financial system. And so cutting off their money is another critical part. China's involvement in the economy of North Korea gives it a central role in controlling the crisis, says Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro. Most of the economy that North Korea has left that exists has to do with China. So, you know, it depends on China's willingness to be helpful, which they've, as the president has noted, they've gotten better about, but also our willingness to sanction Chinese institutions that still do business with North Korea. Even though current sanctions, strong words, and shows of force have failed to halt the advance of North Korean nuclear and missile technology, there seems to be limited belief that military options would improve the situation. The U.S. Congress returns this week from a lengthy recess to face not only the North Korean issue, but funding the government to avoid a shutdown, action to save or abandon a health program used by millions of children, and the authorization of federal aid for the victims of Hurricane Harvey. Marcus Harton. VOA News, Washington.